Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a good day. I am about to go play a 1-2 private game. This is the first vlog of the channel. So hopefully it goes well, we'll make some money, but either way, let's have a good time. Now, let's get in those poker hands. All right guys, we had bought into this game for $300. I had played some hands, recordings didn't go well. I didn't write down the right notes. So anyways, needless to say, we had lost some money. We are starting this hand off with $132 in total. And we're going to start off with the cutoff leading for $10. We see a beautiful king queen offsuit. At this point, it's looking like aces to me. Of course, I'm going to raise this up. I make it $30 to go. And at this point, the button calls and the undergun decides to go all in for $42. Gets back around to the cutoff. He thinks about it for a little bit, decides he wants to get in there and play some hands. So he calls. I, of course, call and the button calls. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was not expecting the button to call or the under the gun to go all in. So that puts us in a little predicament. I was kind of wanting it heads up. Unfortunately, we're going four ways to a flop with one person all in. So I think I'm pipped here. I think someone has ace, king, ace, queen, something like that. Hoping I can hit my other card. Flop comes out and it's a beautiful queen, nine, nine. So we're ahead of ace, king now. We're beating any middling pocket pairs and we're beating all suited aces. I decided to check after the cutoff checks because I want to protect my range here. Either we're way ahead or we're way behind, and there's really no reason to bet, you know, that there's not too many rivers and turns I'm worried about. Also, when we check here, we allow the cutoff to bluff or bet with some of his weaker pairs, anything they think may be good, and he's afraid to see an overcard or anything that scares him. And that's exactly what happens. Eight of hearts comes, cutoff bets 35. We have an easy all in for 90 here. We're just hoping to fade the snap all in from the button, which luckily we do. Button decides to fold, cut off calls for the remaining, and we are going to the river. Hopefully we're good, hopefully we can hold. Please, one time dealer, let us win this spot. The river comes and it's a deuce of diamonds, the biggest blank we could have asked for in the entire world. If we're ahead on the flop, we're ahead now. We turn over the king, queen, we win the side pot, the cutoff shows ace eight of clubs is one of those hands we were hoping would take a stab. And then the under the gun shows ace king. So we hit our queen, sucked out on him. We scoop the entire pot. Let's go. A few hands later, I look down, I see queen three suited. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Why is this hand on the vlog? Well, I was getting a little bored. I was first act, decided to make it 15 and yeah. We're in Texas, so people don't like to fold here. It's a one-two game. I make it 15 and I end up getting six callers. Not exactly the result you want to see when you're raising with queen three, but it is what it is. Let's see what the flop is. Hopefully we can connect and win this hand. Flop comes out and it is four, five, six rainbow. Now, when you're raising with queen three, you can't ask for a much better flop. There's a club out there, so we flop open-ended with a backdoor flush draw. Everyone checks to me, and I decide to lead out for 100. I'm just going with this hand. Even if someone has overs or an over pair, someone has like some eights or anything, nines, tens, and they want to gamble, I'm okay doing that. I have more than enough outs. I have open-ended, like I said, and go runner runner clubs. My queen could be good if they have an, you know, over pair to the board, if they have seven, something like that. So yeah, I'm leaning out for a hundred. I'm gonna take a stab and I'm gonna try to take this down right now. Don't forget guys, we are in Texas and in Texas, people don't really like to fold that much. I don't know how it is in the rest of the US or in the rest of the world, but here in Texas, it kills people to fold. They do not want to lose pots and bluffing into this many people or semi bluffing really, because we have a lot of outs either way, is not advisable. But somehow we get lucky and everyone one by one folds after another and we end up taking down a hundred plus dollar pot without having to see a turn or river. Take it down on the flop and that's a win for me. Can't be mad at that. Let's go on to the next hand. A few hands later, we look down and see Ace Jack offsuit. There's a $5 button straddle. The small blind decides to call, and this is by where we have to bump it up. We're gonna make it $30 to go. Luckily, we get some respect this time. Folds all the way around to the button. He decides he likes his cards and he wants to play, so he puts in a call. The big blind folds, and we are going heads up to a flop. The flop comes out, queen of spades, deuce of clubs, seven of spades. 
We don't have a single spade in our hands, so on this board I decided to check. He checks behind, turn comes king of spades, and I'm feeling like it's kind of time for me to take a stab. If another spade comes, I can rep it even though I don't have it. Also, we do have a gut shot and we have an ace for the over. So I bet 30, he decides to call and we go to the river. River is an inconsequential five of hearts. All the draws missed. Maybe he has, you know, a queen with a spade. I make him default, so I lead out for 70. I really think this is a check behind or a check in this spot, but I don't like to give up on pots. So I lead out for 70. He thinks about it for a second, says he's never folding, calls, shows ace king, takes down the pot, and hopefully we can win the next one. What better way than to get over our previous ace jack offsuit loss than with another ace jack hand? That's right, ace jack again, guys, and this time we're hoping for a little bit different of an outcome. Under the gun decides he wants to go all in for his remaining $35. I shove over the top for my $245, wanting to isolate, get it heads up, and then I'll feel pretty good. But all those plans go straight out the window when the hijack decides to call for $175 and the cutoff calls for $82. So we're going four ways to a flop all in. And yeah, I'm not feeling too good about this hand. Right now, everyone's deciding how they want to do it, how many times they want to run it. This is my buddy. He's shown his cards. Don't worry. It's not collusion. Everybody's all in. There's no action. And anytime anybody asks how many times you want to run it, my answer is always the same. I don't care. It's up to you. They finally decide they want to go flop three turns, three rivers. Of course, I don't care. So I agree. And we go to the flop. Now, at this point, I'm praying for an ace because I feel like the guy in the hijack has pocket queens, pocket kings, and I'm hoping my ace will be good. And the flop comes out, and wouldn't you believe it, it's ace, deuce, deuce, followed by the queen. So I'm hoping he doesn't have pocket queens, and then a nine. That's the first run out. Luckily, he had pocket kings, so we win that one. Second run out comes a ten of hearts and the eight of hearts. Our ace jack loses to my buddy's ace 10 there. And then the third run out is going to be the six of clubs and the three of clubs. The guy in the cutoff had ace jack as well. So we end up chopping the secondary side pot and the main pot. We do three ways between myself, the cutoff, and my buddy that started all this with his $35 all in. I do scoop the side pot, which had $186 between me and the cutoff, so that was good. That's a nice win. And we make a little bit of money from chopping up everything else. All in all, very donkey play. Ended up getting extremely lucky, sucking out. We hit the last ace, the case ace to beat this poor guy's kings. I kind of felt bad for him, but at the end of the day, that's poker. He knows what it is. He's a good guy. He took it in stride. We had a good laugh about it. And yeah, he definitely deserves to suck out on me at least once. So all in all, good hand, bad play, but the result's fine. Let's stay away from Ace Jack for the rest of the night. How about that? The next hand we're gonna play is a $5 bomb pot. Everyone chips in $5 and we go to two boards. We look down at pocket jacks, flop comes out, and we smash the bottom one. It's ace, jack, king. So we have bottom set. There are two clubs out there and a possible straight jar. The other board is queen, deuce, deuce. We're not really feeling like we're gonna win that unless we hit a jack. Middle position leads out for $6. I have a very strong hand. So I decide, hey, let's bump it up, make it $20. The small blind decides he likes that price, so he calls to see a turn on each board, and the middle position action gets back to him. He decides, hey, that's not quite enough, let's go all in for his remaining $105. Action folds around to us. At this point, I just wanna get all the money in. I don't wanna slow play this. I don't wanna do anything other than get as much money on the table as we can, because we have a strong hand, and I feel like I'm gonna win half this pot outside of you know more straight cards club cards things coming in that could scare me so once again that's kind of why i want to just get it heads up and hopefully maybe have a potential to scoop i don't know we'll see so after he goes all in i decide that sounds like a good idea i move all in as well action gets back to the small blind 
Honestly, at this point, I'm hoping he folds because I really want this to go heads up. The board I have a set on is entirely too wet and I don't want to have to make that sweat. But unfortunately for us, he decides to make the call for his remaining $125 in chips and let's go to a run out. The turn on the top boards, the eight of diamonds, doesn't change anything, but the turn on the board, we have a set of jacks is the 10 of clubs. Now this is quite possibly the worst turn we could ever see. Straights get there, flushes get there. Basically, we're beating nothing at this point, and I'm praying for a good river, and that's when the miraculous jack of clubs comes, giving us quads with an ace kicker. The only hand that beats us is a queen of clubs, but luckily nobody has that for the Royal Flush. I would have cried, I'm not gonna lie to you. So we take half this pot down with quads on one board. We lose, they each had a deuce on the other board. So, hey, half the pot, not that bad. Faded the Royal Flush and got quads. Once again, I'll take this one and let's move on to the next hand. All right, guys, on this hand, we look down at Queen-9 suited. Very playable hand, hits a lot of boards. There is a $5 button straddle. Small blind ends up calling. I decide to make it 25 under the gun. Action folds around to the cutoff who calls, and then the button and small blind decide to fold, which means we are going heads up to a flop. And on this hand, I don't really know if I want to hit my queen or not. I feel like the nine would be better, but when the flop comes out, four of spades, six of spades, four of clubs, I can't ask for a much better hand. We have a flush draw. I lead out for 25. Cutoff decides to go all in for his remaining $83. Since it's heads up, it gets back to me. I instantly call and we discuss on how many times we would like to go. Per usual, I let him decide. I don't really care. He says he wants to go twice. I say that's fine with me. Let's go twice and see what happens. On the first run out, we immediately bink the flush with the five of spades coming in. But then the ten of spades comes on the river and I'm not sure if my queen high flush is good anymore. Fortunately for us, it is. And we go to the second run out, which comes a king of diamonds. Once again, not the best card, followed up by the queen of clubs. So we have a pair of queens on the second board and the flush on the top board. The cutoff decides to muck his hand. We take it down and scoop another pot. Let's go. Okay, this is the last hand of the night. We've been having fun. We've had a couple drinks. I have deuce four of diamonds. I decide to limp in for $2. Middle position decides to make it 25. Small blind, big blind call. And at this point I'm like, hey, $23 to win a hundred. Why not? I'm in there. I toss in the call. The flop comes king three, six. So we flop a gutter ball and everyone checks to mill position. He bets 20. I'm like, I'm not folding for $20. I hit a gut shot. I can get paid. So I call the $20. We go to the turn and it's the miraculous five of spades. We bink the gut shot. I show my two of diamonds because it was exposed earlier and he didn't see it. And I tell him I could have deuce four of diamonds. I checked it to him. He bets $200. At this point, I just say, forget it. I'm going all in. He snap calls. So I think he may be on the flush draw or have, you know, a set, something like that to where, you know, he, he could get there. He flips over his hand. He has king nine offsuit. He's drawing dead. We had already agreed to run it a couple times. I had about $500 in front of me. So I scoop this thousand dollar pot. Let's freaking go, baby. What a way to end the night. All right, guys, so last night was a crazy, fun first vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We were in the game for about 700, cashed out for around 950, lost a little bit here and there at the end after that last hand, which was super fun. The guy at the end, his name's Sean, he's my buddy. We had a good time. I got him a drink afterwards. It was all in good fun, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you don't mind, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.